In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning to you all, and welcome to our Mass as we celebrate the feast of the patron saint, the patron saint of Ireland. Let us offer this Mass for K. Murphy, whose first anniversary occurs at this time, and Elizabeth and Patrick Coven and the deceased family members, Elizabeth Rogers, Annie, Hugh and Katie Nash and the deceased family members, Patrick, Teresa, Patrick and Teresa Lennon and the deceased family members, Etha, Patrick and Brendan Callaghan, whose anniversary is also occurred at this time. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them, and may they rest in peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to you, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamp of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, see for prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, through the work of Saint Patrick in Ireland, we have come to acknowledge the mystery of the one true God and give thanks for our salvation in Christ. Grant by his prayers that we who celebrate this festival may keep alive the fire of faith he kindled through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> First reading, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Before I am formed, you in the womb, I knew you. Before you came to birth, I consecrated you. I have appointed you as prophet to the nations. I said, Ah, Lord, look, I do not know how to speak. I am a child. But the Lord replied, Do not say, I am a child. Go now to those to whom I sent you, and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to protect you. It is the Lord who speaks. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, There. I am putting my words into your mouth. 
This is the word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Acclaim him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Strong is his love for us. He is faithful forever. Second reading, a reading from the Act of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly to the Jews. We had to proclaim the word of God to you first, but since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, we must turn to the pagans, for this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations, so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. It made the pagans very happy to hear this, and they thanked the Lord for his message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus, the word of the Lord spread through the, wo- the whole countryside. This is the word of the Lord. Speak, Lord. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring good news to the poor and freedom to prisoners. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out ahead of him in pairs to all the towns and places he himself was to visit. He said to them, The harvest is rich but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. Start off now, but remember, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, no haversack, no sandals. Salute no one on the road. Whatever house you go into, let your first words be, peace to this house. And if a man of peace lives there, your peace will go and rest on him. If not, it will come back to you. So stay in the same house, taking what food and drink they have to offer. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town where they make you welcome, eat what is set before you. Cure those in it who are sick and say, The kingdom of God is very near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not make you welcome, go out into the streets and say, We wipe off the very dust of your town that clings to our feet and leave it with you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is very near. But I tell you, on that day it will not go as hard with Sodom as with that town. The 72 came back rejoicing. Lord, they said, even the devils submit to us when we use your name. And he said to them, I watched Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Yes, I've given you power to tread underfoot serpents and scorpions and the whole strength of the enemy. Nothing shall ever hurt you. Yet, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. Rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. And this is the gospel of the Lord.
It's very hard to say many things nowadays about Patrick, St. Patrick. You know, it's a long time since he was in Ireland. When he was born at the end of the, you know, the very fourth century. It was, and he came into Ireland that time from Britain, which was embattled really age of the crumbling Roman Empire at that time. So empires were falling apart then. Maybe in a certain sense today too, nearly 2,000 years afterwards, our empires are falling apart too ourselves. The protection of Rome was not there to prevent Patrick, remember, being captured at the very tender age of 16. You can imagine what that must have been like. And he spent six years in Ireland. He escaped only at the age of 22. Now, what a cultural shock that must have been initially for Patrick. Apart altogether from the hardships of slavery, but in a strange way, we, we have his confessions, a wonderful book that he speaks himself. He speaks of that time in his confessions and considers it a time of grace. He said an experience that brought him to his senses. You know, sometimes think of that. You think when things are the worst, you know, the things that they couldn't get any, any worse than this. That was the time that things began to change. And you might say, look at Ireland today, things are not good. You say things couldn't get any worse <clears throat> in terms of the church and things like that. But they can. If we can revive that faith that Patrick himself had, and how did he get it? Well, I think a lot of it is to do with humility. He himself he comes across as a very humble man. He calls himself a sinner, you know, a poor sinner. Just like St. Francis when he became Pope, he, he, looked, he considered himself a sinner. That's the beginning, I think, of renewal. He was a shy person, it seems. A, he might have had a low self-esteem at that time. He said, he, in his words, he said, I am not able to put into words what was going on inside. He found it difficult to put words on what was happening to him. But he used a striking image to describe his life at the time he was taken captive. Before, he said, I was humbled. I was like a boulder, buried deep in the bog. Then he who was powerful came, and in his mercy not only hauled me out, but shouldered me up and set me on top of the fortifications. What a spiritual conversion he indeed experienced. But it was all due to God and his mercy, according to Patrick. He who was mighty, who was merciful, did all of that, he said. And he writes, when he arrived in Ireland, he was looking after flocks, of animals, sheep and goats, whatever. He said, he was looking after flocks the whole time. He said, I prayed day and night in all weathers. And I would never seem to be tired. Even in, even in the snow, he said. I was up there praying. You know, and he writes, I really, I felt undeserving of the graces that I received. That's his humility. I think he probably experienced a real mystical kind of prayer. He said, the Holy Spirit had taken hold of me. The Holy Spirit. He didn't know if God was praying within him or beside him, above him, or whatever. We have his Patrick's breastplate, haven't we? I think it might come from that, the way he prayed, how he experienced God. 
He said, I actually saw him praying within me. That must be the Holy Spirit. This was a time, of course, of great loss in Patrick's life. But, of course, it was also, as we know, a very deep spiritual, personal growth experience too. And that spiritual renewal that was formed then became the basis of his extraordinary missionary work in Ireland many years later. You know, it's often the way in our own lives, isn't it, that the most painful experiences can also be the most life-giving for ourselves and for others. At any stage in our lives, we can find ourselves in a kind of exile, exile experience. Even the present pandemic experience of many people that feel isolated, almost exiled in many ways. And our whole personal landscape changes. We feel maybe lonely, frightened, estranged sometimes. Some poor people are very frightened, indeed, even these days. And they might feel crushed. You know, but remember, we are not alone. As Patrick tells us, we are not alone at such times. He is always close to the brokenhearted, those whose spirit is crushed, working to bring something new out of what is dying. And I hope and pray that that is happening to us, to our country today. Something new is happening. Something is dying, definitely. But something new will come. What will that be? God, remember, seemed to stand by Patrick in all his trials. You know, he got back to his homeland with extraordinary adventures. You know, and God seemed to use him, indeed, to get back to his homeland and to bring safety even to those who are with him. It was a bit like St. Paul, I think. It's likely Patrick believed he would never leave his parents again. But God works, you know, in mysterious ways. And after some years, we were told that in a dream, a man appeared or came to him, a man who was called Victor. He brought letters from Ireland. And in the vision, he heard the voice of the Irish call out to him, O oh, holy boy, we beg you to come, to come again and walk among us. O oh, holy boy, we beg you to come again and walk among us. That got into his heart. He couldn't get it out of his mind. And after studying for the priesthood, he was eventually sent on mission to Ireland as a bishop. He tells us that himself. But in the course of that difficult mission, he says that he often felt the urge to go back to his homeland, but knew that this was God's call. It's not I, he said, but Christ the Lord who ordered me to come here and to be with these people for the rest of my life. That was his commitment. What a commitment. His missionary adventures are like those, I said, of St. Paul, that great, the greatest missionary in the church. God, he said, saved me on 12 occasions when my life was in peril, as well as rescuing me from a number of treacherous situations. Indeed, he was prepared to give everything for the name of the Lord and to teach the people and to baptize them. His love for the Irish is clear. He said, the truth that Christ put into my heart, he said, has stirred a great affection inside me for the people and the children of this neighboring land. For him, the neighboring land is Ireland. That's the reason he said, I left my homeland and family. I have put my life, he said, on the line, put it at the Lord's disposal so that I can evangelize 
these poor pagans, whatever my unworthiness. That's the type of people we need today too, people prepared to give everything, to put our lives on the line, indeed for the faith to evangelize again, our own country. You know, I think we can't glory in today in vocations and read in the gospel. Indeed, the harvest is rich, but the labors are few, and it's very, very true. And I, I was told last year in Ireland, we, could you imagine a country that has provided priests for all over the world for years and years and years? I think they'd only one priest, you know, ordained for the priesthood in Ireland last year. What? See, that is the, rea- the reality that we are facing today. So we need the spirit of Patrick to, re- to help us, to renew us. And, you know, when he died himself, Ireland was a transformed country. He baptized thousands. And he tells us, of course, that he never took a cent from the thousands he baptized. He wouldn't take anything. And people say would offer him gifts. They would offer him jewelry. Some women would come with different things. But he always promptly returned all these things. Some of them didn't like it, but he did that. He would not, he would not allow anything to compromise his ministry. And of course, an amazing religious re- revival enveloped the country of Ireland at that time. And even the life of consecrated virginity began to soar in this country, you know, where he had nothing before, a country that was seeped in idolatry, and all sorts, of, he called it, of old nonsense, as he put it. All his success, though, he attributed it, not to himself, but simply to the grace of God. The story of Patrick brings home to us, I think, the unexpected nature of God's call to all of us. You never know where God is calling, how he calls and who he calls, and the way he calls us. God can surprise us. He will, please God. He will surprise us today. I think he is doing it. Because God's purpose for our lives can be so much greater than our own plans. Put them in the hands of a loving, merciful God who loves us. Patrick has a message for us today. We, the Irish today, he has a message. Let us listen to him, to his humility, his prayer, his dedication, and his love. His love for God is love for the Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us make the profession of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we gather, in spirit today to honor your missionary saint patrick we thank you for the multitude of graces you have bestowed on us as part of his legacy and bring our prayers to you with confidence and joy 
In today's Gospel, we read how Jesus asked the Apostles and all those who loved him to proclaim the good news to all creation. We pray that we, like St. Patrick, be blessed with the wisdom, grace and courage to proclaim the Gospel by our words and actions in our everyday lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <clears throat> As we celebrate the legacy of St. Patrick, our patron, sa our patron saint, we pray for the Church in Ireland that it may, in humility, recognise its mistakes, be open to reform and renewal, and wisely face the challenges of today's ever-changing world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On St. Patrick's Day, we pray for all the people of Ireland that they may be, may be filled with the courage and spirituality of St. Patrick and overcome the many challenges facing this country at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Irish people all over the world, especially family and friends, that they may be safe from all harm and danger. We pray especially for those who have been unable to return home for some time on account of the COVID-19 pandemic, for all those separated from loved ones and for those exiled in faraway lands. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those Irish people who have followed in the footsteps of St. Patrick as missionaries and as volunteers in developing countries, that God may bless their efforts to, cre to create a more just world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked, asked for our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our Father, we thank you for sending St. Patrick to Ireland and pray that you bestow on us the grace to honor and protect his legacy. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. For through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Through the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. The second one forever. With humble spirit and Praying, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, accept this pure sacrifice which through the which through the labors of Saint Pantry, you are grateful. Your grateful people make to the glory of your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hands. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god and to proclaim your greatness with due praise as we honor saint patrick for you drew him through daily prayer in captivity and hardship to know you as a loving father you chose him out of the world to return to the land of his captives that they might acknowledge jesus christ their redeemer in the power of your spirit you directed his paths to win the sons and daughters of the irish to the service of the triune god and so with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, you are church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Amen, and Michael, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Elizabeth and Patrick Coburn, and the deceased family members, Elizabeth Rogers, K. Murphy, Hugh and Katie Nash, and the deceased family members, Patrick, Teresa, Patrick and Teresa Lennon and the deceased family members, Eta, Patrick and Brandon Callahan, whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also, 
our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with their patron St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory, glory and honour honor is yours forever and ever. ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of you our mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, bring us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
ഐ വിഷ് ഓൾ ഓഫ് യു എ ഹാപ്പി സെയിൻ പാട്രിക്സ് ടൈം മേ സെയിൻ പാട്രിക് ഓൾവേസ് ഇൻറ്റർ സീഡ് ഫോർ അസ് മെനി വിൽ കം ഫ്രം ഈസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് വെസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് സിഡ് ഡൗ ആൻഡ് സിഡ് ഡൗൺ വിത്ത് എബ്രഹാം ഐസക് ആൻഡ് ജേക്കബ് അറ്റ് ദ ഫീസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ദ കിങ്ഡം ഓഫ് ഹെവൻ സേസ് ദ ലോഡ് ലെറ്റ് എസ് പ്രൈം Strengthen us, O Lord, by the sacrament, so that we may profess the faith taught by St. Patrick and to proclaim it in our way of living through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God the Father, who called us together to celebrate this feast of St. Patrick, bless you protect you and keep you faithful amen may christ the lord the high king of heaven be near you at all times and shield you from every evil amen may the holy spirit who is the source of all holiness make you rich in the love of god's people amen and may the blessing of almighty god the father and the son and the holy spirit come down on you and remain with you forever amen our mass is ended let us go in the peace of christ thanks be to god